you know, you're going to get your project pretty much to a finishable state. Uh, this might be a little bit of a longer video, so bear with me, um, but I think you're going to enjoy your result. I already have my file open up, so um, go ahead and do that as well. And I also already have my layer window open up. Just to, again, triple check, here are our layer um, order. We have stock photo. I have it hidden right now. You have your original outline. I also have that hidden. And then we have our color layer, which is the one that I have shown right now. I'm going to go ahead and hide that again. Here was just the outline. And then at this point in time, we should have our color finished. There may be, uh, like there are on mine, some areas that could not be colored because there were gaps or missing lines in the outline. The first thing that we're going to do today is fix that. And then we're also going to make a background gradient. Do note that yours, depending on if it does not have a full sky like this, might not even need it. Maybe you actually had to fill your entire canvas. Um, if that's the case, then that's the case. But if not, you can save some time by doing a gradient background. Uh, let, you, let me just show you what we'll look at by the time we're done. We're going to be here, and then we're going to do one final step that I actually haven't even done in my quote-unquote finished example yet. So let's get started. First things first, out of our layers, we want to make a new layer, and I want to put it right below the color uh, layer. I'm going to show you, though, just in case, if you have the color layer selected, uh, you can go ahead and hit the plus sign here to create a new layer. It'll be called Layer 4. We want to click and drag so that it's literally just right below your color layer. Also, now would be a good time to lock your color layer. Um, deny. I don't need Wycom updating right now. Um, you can go ahead and lock the color layer, like uh, like shown. Layer four, let's double click on the text there and let's rename it fill, F-I-L-L. -L. Also gonna change the color of fill to, uh, let's go yellow and then hit okay. On fill, let's zoom in, let's pick any one of your areas that you wanna change the color of or fill in the empty area. I'm sorry, let's do this one right here that I'm kinda of hovering over. I'm going to quickly show my photo layer, the eyeball again, and I'm gonna hit the eye tool for eyedropper. I'm gonna grab the color that I want to color in that area with, and then I'm going to hide the stock photo. Since we can't paint it in, I'm just gonna brush it in, and I'm gonna hit B for brush. The brackets, the left bracket and the right bracket that are next to the uh, P key. I'm going to make it pretty big, at least while I'm not around the edge right here where they kind of touch to another color. And because our fill layer is literally below the color, I'm just going to pretty sloppily draw this color in with a large brush. Uh, you'll see that when I unclick here, I'm still uh, holding down right now. I'm just going to try to do a fine job around the edge right there, you know. It doesn't really matter too, too much there. And then I let go, and uh, it's all going to be behind your color layer, because if you look, fill right here is literally uh, below color. So that makes that nice and easy. I'm going to scroll over here and maybe even zoom out a little bit, because all of this is intended to be essentially one color right here. I'm going to show the stock photo. Um, or it actually looks like it's two, but we're just going to do it as one right now for time saver's sake. Grab this light color here that's in the middle. Grab my brush tool with B, and I am going to cover up that bit there, but then I'm just going to hold down the bracket key, watch my brush get enormous, and uh, this way this will take a lot less time as I just swipe over this entire area here. Again, don't worry about it looking messy because when you unclick, if I scroll away from it there, You'll see it fills in just fine. It'll do, you will notice that the colors probably go over the line, that black line, a little bit. Um, we're going to be doing a little thing later where the lines disappear anyway, so um, that that won't matter. Unless you want the lines to show, then you got to be really careful when you go around them. I think most of us will probably choose to hide these in just a bit. Let me just take care of this last little area as well. I grab the color. Just a big brush, just going over it right here. Boom. Minimize. Voila. Uh, done. Done with the fill anyway. I had no other gaps besides that. My mountain was fine. So go ahead and fill in your gaps. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you're watching on your own at this point. 
um, fill in the gaps, and then we'll get ready for gradient. I'm going to continue on, however, right now. Now that the fill layer is done, I'm going to lock it. I'm going to leave it shown, though. Color and fill are both going to be in the final result, and I'm going to make a new layer. Layer 5. I want this right below fill. I'm going to call this background. It is essentially just a gradient, but it's going to be like my sky, kind of, or like the most furthest back in my photo. Um, this is going to get a little tricky because it's not exactly easy to eyedropper uh, things from your photo. So you kind of have to kind of look at this and kind of remember what the colors look like. Um, we're just going to be making a two-tone gradient no matter what your sky is. Again, don't worry, it doesn't have to perfectly or even remotely match your photo. But I'm going to go for like a light blue and a really, really, really uh, light gray, borderline white. I'm going to be taking this tool right here, the rectangle tool, to start. It's right here, over here. Uh, the hotkey for it is M. In addition to that, right now, I have a stroke of that brown from the sand, and I don't have a fill. What I can do is hit this little swap button, and it'll swap it to uh, fill in that like brown. Don't worry about the, what the color is right now, because we're going to change it later, so it really truly doesn't matter. I'm going to click and drag to fill this shape or fill the background with a color you'll see and let go again it's below both the fill and the color layer so it's the, the shape that we just put that rectangle by clicking and dragging there will be behind it now i want to make this a gradient and then i also want to edit that said gradient while we still have it selected if you look right here where i'm hovering it has the option of being a solid color, being none, like if I click that, it just deletes it out. Or if I click in the middle here, it'll go to gradient. So this way, um, now the gradient is in the wrong direction, and we're going to try to fix that right now. I always get a little hung up about this, so this might be a little bit of learning experience with me here. I think now, as soon as I hit gradient, you'll see that this gradient window popped out open, but it is right here. I can go to edit gradient. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, once I hit Edit Gradient, the first thing that you want to do is get your orientation uh, set into place. So right now, it goes from left to right. Don't worry about the colors yet. I want it to go up and down. So if I hover over to the edge of it where the second color is, you'll see your icon turns into kind of like a swirl arrow. Click and hold, and then that way, that'll let you rotate the orientation of it. Now it is very far up. I hope that I can move it down. Yes. By clicking on this white bar, I can kind of reassign it down a little bit like that. Um, if I'm correct, yes, what this does is this little slider will make the colors kind of like more intense from one to the other. Like it kind of pushes the white down right now or pushes the white up and kind of hides the black. Depending on what colors you want, you know, you might want to do this. Again, this might be better to do after we change the colors. So let's get into that first. So right now we have our orientation down or the direction and I want to change individual colors. Just go with two, makes it simple. Right here I have this white. If I double click on the little white uh, guy, that brings up a color palette. Right now it's just grayscale. So I want to go over to here to my swatches and then just click in any of these colors. Try to get the remotely closest color. I'm looking for like a light blue, or in this case, a cyan. I'll click that. Again, it's way too dark and way too saturated for me. So I'm gonna go back to my palette version, and now you'll see it's colored. So I, can, I have the full spectrum here, and I'm gonna go up to like a lighter blue. I know it's really tiny, so you have to kind of like figure that one out yourself. And in this part here, it is going to be much harder to sample it from the photo. So in this case, use your best judgment to kind of wing it yourself. Uh, we're gonna go with right there. And then I'm gonna double click on black, do the same thing. Uh, in this case though, I would want it to build to like a straight white. In fact, I'm just gonna choose this light gray. Um, and I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm actually pretty happy with that sky right now. So grab your two colors for your sky. I think two is honestly what looks the best. It won't make it look fake or anything like that. It helps it with the illustration. And then you can close the gradient window by clicking this right there and then click it again, closes both. Um, it looks like I still have my gradient selected. So what I would recommend that you do, take the selection tool here and literally just click off into like the gray. You can scroll, get your full thing. 
Appreciate your hard work, though we are not quite done yet, but now would be a good time to pause, get that gradient situated, re rewind the video if you're watching on your own, and uh, watch those steps again. Let's talk about the finishing touches. Let's open up our layers. Color, fill, background, outline, stock photo. We're going to lock the background layer as well, but we are going to leave it shown because it is part of our final result. Color layer is the only one that we need to do something else to. So let's unlock it. We have the selection tool already selected from just trying to click off and deselect things. So if you don't though, select it, top left, hotkey is V. Click, drag, and select your entire canvas. It should only select the contents though of your color layer because A, we have the color layer selected and B, every other layer is currently locked. With all of this selected, you will notice if you look at your fill and stroke, or we can look up here at fill and stroke, the fill is a question mark. The reason why it's a question mark is that every object that we have selected right now is a different color. So Illustrator is like, I can't figure out what the fill is. However, the stroke is universally black right now. If I click on this drop down arrow, I could change the color of the stroke, or I could just straight up remove it. And if I go over to here to where it says none in the top left, not only will it remove the stroke, but it subsequently fills the stroke with the, the fill of each individual shape. So it won't leave a gap, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, anybody who had done anything in like sketchbook last year, uh, where like the pixel art or a low poly or something like that, or even in, if you've done it in Photoshop, it will leave gaps. Illustrator just knows and it'll fix it. So I'm gonna click this little checkbox here, and then let me just click off to deselect, and I'll zoom in and show you kind of what it did. Look at that. Everything is there as is, but no lines. So it looks super seamless. You'll be able to decide if you like your final result without the lines or with them. I honestly think that the project looks better, generally speaking, without them. It looks more finished, I should say. So here we are. You're done. Um, what we want to do now is we're just going to want to go to File and Save. Let this guy save. Hit OK. This is your final version. You will be uploading this file to Schoology uh, for your final uh, print grade. And that is it, guys. Congratulations. Can't wait to see the prints.